Dearly beloved in Christ, on this 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time, the Gospel of Luke chapter 10 from verse 1 to verse 12 and beginning again from verse 17 to verse 20 tells us about the commissioning of the 72 disciples. While chapter 9 of St. Luke's Gospel tells us about Jesus sending out the 12 apostles, chapter 10 tells us about sending forth the 72 disciples. The Christian tradition identifies the 12 apostles with ordained ministry in the church, and the 72 disciples is understood to identify the ministry of the laity. This is an indication that the ministry of the church is an invitation to all to be involved, clergy and laity alike. Just like in last Sunday's Gospel, where Jesus sent messengers ahead of him prior to his journey to Jerusalem, today's Gospel tells us that Jesus appointed 72 disciples and sent them ahead to every town and place he intended to visit. The scripture has it that he sent them in prayers to go and announce the coming of God's kingdom. It is important to know that in Mosaic law, for a testimony to be credible, there must be at least two witnesses. This probably might be the reason behind sending them in prayers. Jesus in today's Gospel announces to his disciples that the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few, and urged them to pray the master of the harvest to send laborers to attend to his abundant harvest. Considering the nature of this mission, Jesus, while sending out these disciples, warns them that he is sending them like lambs among wolves. By this description, Jesus acknowledges the fact that this mission is not an easy task. This warning, of course, is not meant to discourage them. Instead, it was meant to help them to know the reality of the challenges of discipleship, which include extreme hostility from people. Part of his aim was also to encourage them to be strong in the face of difficulties. However, it is important to remember here Jesus' promise in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, I will be with you always until the end of time. Jesus further instructs the disciples on how to carry out this mission effectively with attentiveness and commitment. He encourages them to shun anything that might distract them from their mission and advises them to live very simple life of witness to the mission and to remain in any house and town that welcomes them while enjoying the hospitality of their hosts and relying on their generosity. Jesus also emphasizes the importance of bringing and sharing peace and enjoins his disciples to bring greetings of peace to whatever household they visit. This peace, he says, we stay with the household that receives them and departs from the household that rejects them. He reminds them that their mission will reflect a mark of a true disciple by curing the sick and by proclaiming that the kingdom of God is at hand. Upon their return from the missionary experience, the disciples reported to Jesus rejoicing that their mission has been successful. According to them, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Jesus, however, concludes today's gospel by telling them that they should not rejoice because the spirits are subject to them, but should rather rejoice that their names are written in heaven. Although they were sent as lambs among wolves, they came to the realization that they have been given power over Satan and evil, and to even tread upon serpents and scorpions, and yet remain on hand. Brothers and sisters, today's gospel teaches us about the challenges 
difficulties, and of course, the rewards of a true disciple. It also reminds us that the call to discipleship is an invitation to all children of God to bear witness to the ministry of Jesus Christ, and that every Christian is called to participate actively in the ministry of spreading the good news of Christ through commitment to prayer and action. And since the harvest is abundant with few laborers, let us continue to ask the master of the harvest to send out more laborers for his harvest. Thanks for reflecting on the word with me. The Lord be with you. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.